acne is a skin disorder caused by um, sebaceous glands when they clog hair follicles. So what happens, you can see here that sebaceous glands are associated with the hair follicle itself. When there's an overproduction of sebum or if something prevents it from making its way to the surface of the skin, it starts to build up in that area. And so a whitehead is just a type of acne or a type of pimple where you can see that sebum and that inflammation developing underneath the skin. A blackhead is just another type of pimple where basically now the sebum is exposed to the environment and the surface of it takes on a dark appearance due to oxidation. Um, it can become uh, kind of more inflamed and even more serious because of bacteria causing an infection in the area. So really big zits or, um, or uh, really inflamed ones are due to that extra infection from bacteria. And acne is more common in adolescents or teenagers, and that's because of puberty, because sebum production is um, associated with hormones. So during puberty, the hormones are increasing significantly, and it's changing quite a bit from day to day, which increases sebum production and increases the likelihood of acne. The skin is also really prone to injuries because that's part of its function is to protect deeper structures from being injured. Um, but the good thing is, is that your skin heals fairly quickly and fairly well depending on um, what type of injury there is. So first of all, if we look at here, so if we look at an injury, maybe someone stepped on a nail or they scraped themselves or something, um, the first thing that happens is that these inflammatory chemicals are released in the bloodstream. And those inflammatory chemicals help to bring more blood to the area, and that blood is bringing with it um, uh, resources such as uh, glucose and oxygen in order to make energy, and your white blood cells, which are your immune cells that are going to fight off infection in the area. It also helps to trigger the production of a clot, and that clot just helps to prevent from blood loss, so too much blood loss from happening. So you've got those inflammatory chemicals that attract, these are white blood cells here that are going to fight off the bacteria, and you're gonna start forming a clot so you don't bleed to death from a simple skin injury. Over time, the damaged area starts to fill in with granulation tissue, and granulation tissue is just a connective tissue, um, and it's fairly strong. It's scar tissue, really, is what it is. The epithelial cells at the surface may begin to multiply and fill in the damaged area of the epidermis. Now, if the injury is too deep or too wide, the epithelial cells might not be able to fill in the area, and the scar may be visible on the surface of the epithelium. After um, the skin has had more time to generate the, um, the replacement cells for the damaged areas, you do have the formation of a scar. And um, as I mentioned, depending on the severity of the injury, the epithelium may cover the scar and you might not be able to see the scar very clearly. Other times that scar is visible through the epithelium because the epithelium isn't really able to um, fill in that area. And so what you're actually seeing in a scar is the granulation tissue or the scar tissue underneath. So a scar is just that collagen-rich skin, so it's that connective tissue, that granulation tissue that's formed as a wound is healing. Um, so you're going to notice it when a wound is too deep or severe for normal skin to regenerate in the area. And scars act different than normal skin because they lose the functions of the, um, of the epidermis. So for example, in an area where you have a scar, the hair and nails don't regenerate and it's going to look different than the normal epithelium because you're not seeing epithelial tissue of the epidermis, you're seeing connective tissue instead. Now a keloid is a type of scar in which there's an overproduction of scar tissue and it results in a raised scar as you can see here. 
In other instances, atrophic scars can occur, and atrophic scars means that the skin takes on a sunken appearance. And this is especially common with acne scars and chicken pox scars, um, where the skin, you can see kind of a, um, areas of the skin that are lower in elevation than the normal skin.